Since 2014, when Kevin Harvick joined Stuart Haas Racing, he has statistically been the best driver in all of NASCAR. He started off hot, winning the championship in the first season that he raced with the team. And aside from 2016, every year from 2014 to 2019 has seen the four team third place in points or higher. So heading into 2020, Harvick looked to just try and make everything business as usual. And for the first four weeks, it was. He finished 5th, 8th, ninth, and 2nd, while also leading 159 laps. Heading into the 5th race of the season in Atlanta, he looked pretty good. But unfortunately, the world didn't, and it was turned upside down. And NASCAR would be halted for two months due to the COVID-19 shutdowns in 2020. But Harvick would storm back into domination as NASCAR came back. Back straight away, final time. Kevin Harvick is about to become the 14th driver in NASCAR Cup history to reach 50 career victories, breaking a tie with Tony Stewart for 14th. Harvick wins NASCAR's return to action. After a consistent few races, Harvick and the Cup Series and co finally made it back to Atlanta. And the white flag is waving as we have one lap to go, sponsored by Credit One Bank. And that is the mercy flag for the rest <laughs> of this field. Yeah, this has been an impressive day. Kevin Harvick was strong at times, but he and Rodney Childers had to work very hard to get their car back to the front. And I give Kevin a lot of credit for how hard he pushed to take the lead away from Kyle Busch. We'll light that candles on Rodney Childers' birthday cake because Kevin Harvick wins Atlanta. Great pit stop and what? I don't know what you guys did to this thing at the end, but great job. Now the next three races would be the worst stretch of Harvick's 2020 season. At Martinsville, he would struggle all race and would run to lower top 10 and upper teens. He ended up getting his first finish off of the lead lap all year, finishing 15th. And this would be crucial later on in the playoffs. Aside from a future playoff race, the same scenario took place on a much more mediocre scale at Homestead as he finished 26th a lap down. Add to that a 10th at Dega and now you have Harvick's worst stretch of races of the season. This would be followed up by a dominant return to form and add playoff points to the end of his summer. And here they come to the white flag, one lap to go, sponsored by Credit One Bank. Hamlin looking for Pocono win number six. Harvick looking to win here for the first time ever. See Denny run a little bit lower line. Not really closing that gap enough. The only thing I see happening here, Mike, is Harvick's going to have to make a mistake in the tunnel turn. I just don't see Kevin Harvick making that mistake in these last couple of corners. Harvick did break the draft going down Long Pond straight away. Hamlin unable to gain ground in the short shoot. For the final time. And on to the front straightaway. Kevin Harvick at Pocono finally is a winner. Great job. Way to do the strategy. What a, what a, what a turnaround. Great job, guys. Awesome. A huge lead over Matt Kenseth. Down the back stretch for the final time. Harvick, Denny Hamlin. They've been the dominant two cars. All of 2020, Hamlin crashes out as they were battling for the lead. Now Harvick trying to go back to back at the most fam famous racetrack in the world. Coming out of turn four, Kevin Harvick is going to see the checkered flag. He wins again at the Brickyard. Final lap, jockeying for positions. Four, five, six. Harvick trying to hold off. Brad Keselowski. Can Keselowski be the first ever Michigan-born driver to win here in Michigan? 
He won a week ago at New Hampshire. His third win of the season. Now doing everything he can to catch up to the four of Harvick. Harvick has been dominant two of the last three races. He's going to make it three out of four. Harvick's going to win again at Michigan. And that'll do it. It's one lap to go, presented by Credit One Bank. We saw a huge mistake off turn two for Harvick, or an issue that both drivers had. And Harvick has to remember that. He's got to make a little bit of a change so he doesn't have to come out of the throttle again on the exit of two. He made that change and never had to come out of the throttle. Great Bragg point. Bragging rights for manufacturers right here in the manufacturer's backyard. The Heritage Trophy going to the winner. And right now, Kevin Harvick looking to sweep the weekend. Denny Hamlin's going to have some momentum on the high side. Will it be enough as they come out of four the final time? Kevin Harvick is going to sweep Michigan. He wins again. Jimmy Johnson trying to hold on to third after pit strategy. Just a two-tire stop. Put him up front. Here Kevin go, Harvick is going to win. He sweeps. In the final 13 races of the regular season, Harvick won five of them. He finished fifth or higher in 11 of them and led 573 laps. This performance, along with the regular season championship, earned him 57 playoff points. So now, with the reset, the question would be how Harvick would respond. Well, even with some luck, it'd be about the same. Again, Chase Elliott with the damage to the right side, his pace definitely falling off, and that's how the lead went to Kevin Harvick. Brendan Poole up there in front of those guys in that 15 car. Crew Chief Rodney Childers said, we have to prove ourselves. He wants to concentrate more on calling the races. Well, when you win seven races, on the bottom of the racetrack, Kevin Harvick trying to hold up Austin up Dillon. There, the last charge by Dillon. He comes off a four. Harvick's still going to win. Harvick wins the Southern 500. Kyle's closing in. Trying to be perfect. Great exit for Harvick. One more here. Number one. Final lap. Well, this lap car is going to slow Harvick up a little bit. Final time. Coming through three and four. Harvick's going to hold him off. Harvick wins again. So heading into the round of 12, Harvick advanced with 67 playoff points. A 10th place run at Vegas put him 61 ahead of the cut line, with Talladega and the Roval on the horizon. A crazy crash-filled Talladega race still put him 68 over the cutoff line as others had problems. So going into the Roval, he was a lock. So all that was left would be the round of eight after it. Starting out, he had his same 67 playoff points. Now, this put him only 45 over fifth place Joey Logano, though. And it would be Logano who Harvick would duel for the victory at Kansas. Dirty Air held the four back from clinching a ticket to Phoenix early. Still, a 41-point gap to Chase Elliott with only two races left seemed to be an insurmountable gap. The next week at Texas, though, is where it began to all unravel. Track almost in the fence. Yeah, he had the same issue as Kevin Harvey did. It went through there and just all of a sudden just lost it. I'm like, I agree with Parker. I think this mist is picking up. Watch Kevin Harvey. He drives into the corner. And everything looks good, and then right here, he loses it. See how much gain, how much room Bowman's gaining on him? It just never was able to gain back up, and the car never turned. You just have to wonder if the racetrack isn't a little bit damp right there. I after the race resumed, three days after the ensuing mist storm, Harvick would putter on to a 16th place finish and get merely one stage point. Still, with no new playoff drivers winning, it meant that Harvick still had a 42-point gap over the cutoff line. 
so he seemed pretty safe. As long as he just had a decent day and didn't just flat out collapse, he would be fighting for his second championship in Phoenix. After starting sixth, Harvick dropped like a rock. He was outside the top 30 and a lap down. This compounded even further with incidental contact between he and Matt Kenseth, and it cut a tire, putting him two laps down. So, he won no stage points, not even one. But, after fighting back to the lead lap with less than 100 laps to go, he was back in contention. As the race closed out, Chase Elliott ran away with the win, leaving two spots to be filled by three viable drivers, Denny Hamlin, Brad Kozlowski, and Kevin Harvick. A point was all that Harvick needed to make it in. That point would need to come from passing Kyle Busch. Can Harvick do it? The final turn. Go get it. He needs the position. Oh, Harvick spins the 18. Turns into the 18. He turns as well. The 18 crosses the start finish line, and Harvick is going to be out of the playoffs. The impossible had happened. Kevin Harvick missed the final four. The most dominant season in two decades would be at best a fifth place point finish. And it makes many wonder, what if Harvick could have overcome the dirty air at Kansas? What if he hadn't hit the wall at Texas while it was raining? What if the car had been a little bit less off at Martinsville? What if, in 2020, Kevin Harvick captured his missing ring?